And so section 13 really gets to the crux of it because sacrifice, which is the same thing as scarcity or the idea of scarcity, is one of the underlying foundations to the making of this world. And so in the Bible, Jesus says a very famous, very often quotable, quoted line is Jesus says, I seek mercy, not sacrifice. Mercy, forgiveness, not sacrifice. Although in truth, the term sacrifice is altogether meaningless, it does have meaning in the world. Why? Because when there's no duality, how can anything sacrifice anything if everything is just one? But in the world where we believe we're separate body minds, of course, sacrifice has meaning. Like all things in the world, its meaning is temporary and will ultimately fade into the nothingness from which it came and where there is no more use for it. So just like in in the previous section, one of the biggest challenges we have is we beat ourselves up for, for judging the judger, that we judge ourselves for judging, and we, we, we judge ourselves for still being identified with the body-mind. Ultimately, it will fade into nothingness from which it came, where there is no more use for it. So the ideas that become the ideas of judgment and the body-mind fade because they never actually existed. It's just ideas the son of God forgot not to laugh and his silly mad idea. Now its real meaning is a lesson. Like all lessons, it's an illusion because it's the illusion is the undoing of the identification with the body mind, which is an illusion. So it's a lesson of undoing illusions. And how can there be a lesson of undoing an illusion when once the lesson is learned, there is no illusion to undo. It, there is, it would even, you won't even remember, there won't be a memory of a lesson, an illusion, a universe. So in itself, it becomes an illusion, is an illusion, but it's an illusion that leads away from all other illusions. Like all lessons, it's an illusion, for in reality, there is nothing to learn. We're, all we're doing is unlearning the body-mind identification, the wrong-minded ego projection of fear, sin, and guilt. Yet this illusion must be replaced, here it is, by a corrective device. Because you, how, what do you fill the emptiness with? You've got to fill it with something or the emptiness stays and we've all felt that and we keep wanting to accumulate more, 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 more. For in reality, there's nothing to learn, yet this illusion must be replaced because nothing to learn, what now? Well, something has to replace the idea that filled us. So this corrective device, another illusion that replaces the first, so both can finally disappear. The first illusion, which must be displaced before another thought system can, be, can take hold, is that, that it is a sacrifice to give up the things of this world. What could this be but an illusion? since this world itself is nothing more than that. So give up the idea of giving up is illusion number one. It takes great learning both to realize and to accept the fact that the world is nothing to give. Why? Because you're projecting it. It's all you. That's why I laugh when the spiritual bunnies go, the universe will provide. No, no, no. It's thy self will provide. Because the universe is a projection of you. What can the sacrifice of nothing mean? This is such a vital, fundamental understanding. It cannot mean that you have less because of it. There is no sacrifice in the world's terms that does not involve the body in some way. Think a while about what the world calls sacrifice. Power, fame, money physical pleasure, who is the hero of the dream, and to whom do all these things belong? Could they mean anything except to a body? Yet a body cannot evaluate. The body in itself can do nothing. By seeking after such things, the mind associates, here's the body-mind belief, 
associates itself with the body, obscuring its identity and losing sight of what it really is. And this is, this is the question Patty asked a little earlier. How can I get rid of this identification? Because I've lived my whole life believing I am this. You can't just give it up. It's going to be a gradual release. And it's okay. Yet a body cannot evaluate. So remember, there, it's not your body hanging on to its belief. It's the idea you have, the association body-mind identity. By seeking after such things, the mind associates itself with the body, obscuring its identity and losing sight of what it really is. And think about those of you that have struggled with your weight or don't like your looks, you're too tall, too short, too skinny, too fat. Think about how much time you spent in your life preoccupied with making this device look better. Those of you that have got curly hair, you want straight hair. Those of you that have straight hair, you want curly hair. People think it's fashionable to wear glasses. Those of us that wear glasses wish we did. Once this confusion has occurred, it becomes impossible for the mind to understand that all the pleasures of the world are nothing. And what is it that the ego wants most? Maximize pleasure, minimize guilt by projecting the guilt outside itself. And then because it's outside itself, then attacking other bodies and attracting the bodies which will give it more pleasure. But what a sacrifice, and it is a sacrifice indeed, all this entails. Now has the mind condemned itself to seek without finding, to forever be dissatisfied and discontent, to know not what it really wants to find. Because what is it that you really want to find? If you think about all the possessions and everything you've had and all the people you've tried to attract in your life, what is it that you really wanted? You wanted to be happy. And why did you want to be happy? Because happy is good. Happy is peaceful. Happy is joy. Happy is, I want to be happy. It feels good. It is good. So everything I do is because I want to be happy. And everything I fear is because I think the happiness could become less, be taken away from me, be stolen, be repossessed, be destroyed by someone else, another body. Because if there were no bodies and you were happy, if there were no bodies and you were happy, what would you be if there were no bodies and you were happy? You would be happiness itself. And if you were happiness itself and there were no bodies, what would remove the happiness? You cannot because there's no body to remove the happiness that doesn't occupy a body your happiness itself. Who can escape the self-condemnation? Only through God's word, remembering the memory of God, could this be possible. For self-condemnation is a decision about identity because who are you condemning? The body-mind separate self-identity. And no one doubts what he believes he is. He can doubt all things, but never this. And for your whole life, you've been believing you're this, because the way people treat you, think of racism, sexism, discrimination, bullying, condemnation that happens in the world on a daily, daily basis, and how kids today are struggling with body-mind identification, sexual general orientation, they want to be seen and want other people to see them in a certain way. Think about how much emphasis is placed on this. I mean, we... We keep racism alive by talking about it. We just, we can't let go. Why? It's attached to body. Body attached to color, skin, predisposition, culture, beliefs, values, the religions. And man, it's everything in this world, every war in this world is body versus body. God's teachers can have no regret on giving up the pleasures of the world. And I read that again. God's teachers can have no regret on giving up the pleasures of the world. Why? It's not real. What is the true pleasure? The knowing of oneself. Because what is the knowing of oneself? The knowing of your essential nature. And what is your essential nature? It is peace. It is joy. You don't believe me? Go within. Find it. Keep searching. Keep the self-inquiry. Keep forgiving till there's nothing else to forgive. And that will make itself known. And that, and I can only speak from experience, 
how would I know this unless I've been able to knowingly become it? Become it. becoming it is, is the wrong is the wrong way to say it. Knowingly remember again that I am it, that I've always been it. I temporarily forgot, clouded by my ideas of separation. And I know that this knowing is all I've ever wanted. And now I know it will never go away because even though I'm not completely there all the time, I know I can always return to it the minute it starts to become uneasy and happy. The minute I have a Land Rover day, I go straight back there. And yes, it caught me for a good hour and 45, maybe two hours. So. Yeah. Waiting for a tow vehicle. Yeah. Is it a sacrifice to give up pain? Does an adult resent the giving up of children's toys? Does one whose vision has already glimpsed the face of Christ, the face of love, look back with longing on a slaughterhouse? No one has escaped the world and all its ills look back on it with condemnation. Yet he must rejoice that he is free of all sacrifice. Its values would demand of it. To them, he sacrifices all his peace. To them, he sacrifices all his freedom. And to possess them, must he sacrifice his hope of heaven and remembrance of his father's love. Who in his sane mind chooses nothing as a substitute for everything? Because no matter what you choose in this world as your joy and pleasure, it's an illusion and cannot last. But when you know thyself, the holy son of God self, the right minded self, the self which is retained in the Holy Spirit self, the Holy Spirit, the voice of God self, which becomes tangible in its experience as yourself, joyously so, to be found whenever you choose to look upon it, just by sinking into it. You don't go anywhere. There's no distance between your separate self and yourself because your separate self is an illusion that clouds the self. There's no distance from it. What is the real meaning of its sacrifice? It is the cost of, of believing in illusions. So sacrifice is the cost of believing in illusions. It is the price that must be paid for the denial of truth. What is the truth? I am. God's holy son, I am that which is the extension of my father's love. And, and you have to give up the idea of the devil, you know, Satan, hell, punishment, damnation. Is that such a terrible thing to give up? Or do you desperately want to hang on to the idea of the devil and that you could go to hell and that other people are going to hell? because they were bad in your opinion, the terrorists, except the terrorists think you're terrorists. So would it really be bad? Does it really be hell to give up the idea that all suffering was to end? It is the price that must be paid for the denial of truth. There is no pleasure of the world that does not demand this for otherwise the pleasure would be seen as pain and no one asks for pain if he recognizes the idea of sacrifice that makes him blind it is the idea of sacrifice that makes him blind he does not see what he is asking for he sees in it a thousand ways and a thousand places each time believing it is there think about your own life Replacing people with other people and other people, places with other places and places, things with other things and more things and more things. And each time disappointed in the end. Seek but do not find remains this world's stern decree. It's the decree of the ego. Seek but do not find. And what you find, you find temporary, so then you want some more of it. And no one who pursues the world's goals can do otherwise. So remember the second line there. God's teachers can have no regrets on giving up the pleasures of the world because it is not real. And to possess them, he must sacrifice his hope of heaven. Remember that. Okay. 
You may believe that this course requires sacrifice of all you really hold dear. And you hear many a person, there's many a person on YouTube and whatever, complaining and saying the course is bad and the course made me give up all desires for this life and my life became boring. Yeah, yeah, we're all going to go through. The manual teaches is very clear in the development of trust section. You're going to get to that point of, oh, nothing makes sense. What is this all for? You keep pushing through. You're now in the middle of the fire. You don't step back out. You're already in there. Just step right through it. And burn your ego will burn. Break your heart will break. Heart is ego. Consciousness has no mind or body. It's just pure awareness. You may believe it's not true, that this course requires sacrifice of all you really hold dear. For in one sense, this is true from an illusionary ego point of view. But you hold dear the things that crucify God's sons, the idols, the people, places, things, and events. And it is the course's aim to set him free. But do not be mistaken about what the sacrifice means. It always means that the giving up of what you want and what, O oh teacher of God, is it that you want? It always means the giving up of what you want and what, O oh teacher of God, is it that you want? You have been called by God. Or else you wouldn't be listening to me. You wouldn't be on this YouTube channel right now listening to Luigi Gering on. I'm sure you've got better things to do. Something inside you makes you search. And whatever I'm saying is going to fill a tiny little bit of the puzzle because I can just be a, 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 a signpost. Signpost is just turning you from looking outwards to eventually looking you. You have the answers in you. And you're going to find it by living your life to the best of your ability, as passionately as you can. And especially in the days where you don't want to get up and life just feels like it's shit. And it feels like it's cruel and nothing makes sense. And people are, aren't loyal and people aren't committed and people just don't do what they say they're going to do. And people don't stand by their word and you're not giving up anyway. Because it's just an excuse for you and you just play into their egos. You do not give up. Why would you give up? Why would you stop? Why would you satisfy the rest of the illusionary ego of this world by giving up? Do not. You deserve better. Keep going. Why? Because you have to. Why? Because what other choice do you have? And killing yourself is just pointless. You kind of come back and do it all over again because you chose to come and learn this. So you're going to come back and do it again. And next time around, the body may not be as fun. The brain may not be as clever. You're going to have to read all those books again. Breast milk and baby nappies all over again. Really, you want to do that? School teachers, again, with all these new curriculums, again. Let's get it right in this lifetime. Let's transcend this ego body mind and join with the Christ mind. You have been called by God and you have answered. Would you now sacrifice that call now? Because it's a little tough and COVID has messed us up a little bit and the economy shit. And a few little friends have disappeared and a few breakups have happened and people don't do what they say they're going to do anyway because egos are egos. Time to transcend that. Because the minute you judge those egos for, for being the egos, you've gone into judgment. And it's okay. Eventually, you'll stop doing that too, and you'll just, this too shall pass. Few have heard it as yet, and they can but turn to you. And the minute you choose to serve, the students will come. And in your serving them, you will forget about your separate body, mind, self, as you become the conduit, the voice for the voice for God. And in serving, there is no greater thing. There is this, and I'm doing right now, I'm doing for me, for this experience of this awareness shifting, this glad exchange of an idea of body-mind as it's shifting into the awareness of self. And I love this. And whether it's 20 of you or 200 of you or 20,000 of you, it matters not, for I do it for the self through myself. There is no other voice in all the world that echoes God. If you would sacrifice the truth, they stay in hell. And if they stay, you will remain with them because there's only one dreamer dreaming up this entire hell called the universe. Do not forget that sacrifice is total or not at all. There are no half sacrifices. You could give up heaven partially. 
I mean, you cannot. Well, maybe on a Friday night. I mean, you cannot. You cannot give up heaven partial. Oh, maybe you can. No, you cannot. Think about it. Play with it. There's no way. You can go there on Sunday church and you're singing hallelujah and it's all wonderful in the choir and the guitar is playing and the beautiful girl with the beautiful voice just lifts you up like an angel. Then you get in your car and back into traffic. You cannot give up heaven partially. You cannot be a little bit in hell. Maybe Friday. Definitely on the way to work someday. But if I change my mind about it, traveling to work becomes fun. So you cannot be a little bit in hell. The word of God, the memory of God has no exceptions. The word of God is his memory, is his promise that you are his holy son and you can never change. It is this that makes it holy and beyond the world. It is, it is its holiness that points to God. It is his holiness, its holiness that makes you safe. Why? Because you are in God and never left. And it's only the idea of a body mind that can be hurt and denied or hurt or destroyed. It is denied if you attack any, any brother for anything. Remember this. Because the minute you attack anything in the news, anything people are doing right and wrong in your righteousness, you pull yourself out of it. So be an now. For it is here that the split with God occurs. A split that is impossible, but just in, in our belief, in our awareness, in our unawareness. A split that cannot happen, yet a split in which you surely will believe because you have set up a situation that is impossible. And in this situation, the impossible, and in this situation, the impossible can seem to happen. And it seems to happen at the sacrifice of truth. Why? Because you've chosen it. And because of your free will, God gives you the will to will. You've chosen it, and therefore it becomes by your will. Choose again, holy brother, holy sister of God. Choose again. Teacher of God, do not forget the meaning of sacrifice. And remember that what each decision you make must mean in terms of cost. Decide for God, and everything is given you at no cost at all. Seek you first the kingdom, and all else shall be given you. Decide against him, and you choose nothing. This entire universe is nothing, doesn't exist, just a dream in your mind. At the expense of the awareness of everything, what would you teach? Remember only what you would learn, for it is yeah that your concern should be atonement, at one man, remembering, rejoining with source is for you. Your learning claims it and your learning gives it. The world contains it not. But learn this course, and it is yours. God holds out his word to you, his memory to you, to you. And he has need of teachers. Why does God have need of anything? It's a bit of a play in words. It's a, a tiny little white lie because it's saying, as you become the teacher for God by your own doing, it lifts you. And ultimately, when we all can represent the non-duality of I am, the anointment of the essence of what we are. The world shifts, the world dream, the dream ends, and we return to the peace, love, and joy that is our inheritance. We as need of teachers, what other way is there to save his son? So he's asking his son to teach himself in his own awakening. So in section 14, I don't know if people think about this anymore. As a child, this used to bother me. And I remember, you know, the world, the world first ended. Do you, know, do you all recall in terms of what you've been taught, how the, the world ended the first time? Well, it ended in a flood. And the Bible in the book of Genesis says, and God promised he wouldn't do that again. Like, you know, God needs to promise man, won't, don't worry, I won't flood you out again. But the next time the world will be destroyed in fire. And, you know, I remember in the 80s when nuclear war was imminent and the world was going to bomb itself. As a child, I thought, okay, that's what's going to happen. These nuclear bombs are just going to go off everywhere. And the world is just going to, you know, go into a blaze of glory and we will die in a fire. And I thought that was it. The world was going to end, you know, built a bunker. 
stored food, enough food for three years as a young boy. And hey, you know, that was the duality of a child believing in this thing was going to come to a real physical end. Even the book of Genesis in the Bible, which is really nothing to do with the end of the world, but the end of a thinking, it's all got to do with the seven seals or the seven ideals. But, um, you know, of course, in a duality mindset, Genesis always becomes about end of the world as opposed to end of a thinking way. And so how will the world end? What can, what can what is no beginning really end? Okay. The world will end in an illusion as it began. Yet will its ending be an, il be an illusion of mercy? So that it won't end with us suffering. Okay. It will just be a gently putting it down. We don't want it anymore. The illusion of forgiveness, complete, excluding no one, limitless in gentleness, will cover it, hiding all evil, concealing all sin, and ending guilt forever. Yeah. And so that's how it ends. The father of illusions is the belief that they have a purpose, that they serve a need or gratify a want, perceived as purposeless. They are no longer seen. Their uselessness is recognized and they are gone. How but in this way are illusions ended? Because they're not real. They have been brought to truth. So it's like a shadow being brought to the light. How long can a shadow last in the light? It cannot. So the shadow disappears. The light has always been there. They have been brought to truth and truth saw them not. It merely overlooked the meaningless, and this is the purpose of forgiveness, it doesn't have to act, it merely looks, doesn't take it seriously, doesn't attack, no judgment at all. Until forgiveness is complete, the world does have a purpose. So it becomes the home in which forgiveness is born. So the reason this is still continuing in the Son of God's mind is because he hasn't fully forgiven himself and the aspects of himself, and most importantly, the secret dream, which is I've absorbed the power of God, therefore I've destroyed God, guilt, sin, and fear is real. Okay, so until forgiveness is complete, the world does have a purpose. It becomes the home in which forgiveness is born and where it grows and becomes stronger and stronger and stronger and with more you do it and more all-embracing. Here it is nourished and you'll realize the more you do it, the more you want to do it because it nourishes you and itself as itself. For here it is needed. A gentle savior born where sin was made and guilt seemed real. Here is its home, for there is need of him indeed, the Holy Spirit, the memory of God. He brings the ending of the world with him. It is his call God's teacher answers. It's the call of the Holy Spirit, the voice for God, the memory of God in our heart. Turn to him in silence to receive his word. The world will end when all things have been rightly judged by his judgment. The world will end with the benediction of holiness upon it. In other words, the blessing, the acceptance as oneness, the benediction. So it's the, the, the offering of it, of holiness upon it. When not one thought of sin remains, of separation, the world is over. It will not be destroyed, nor attacked, nor even touched, it will merely cease to be. So what's the point of building bunkers and storing food? It will just disappear and never existed at all. Certainly, this seems to be a long, long way away. When not one thought of sin remains, appears to be a long-range goal indeed. But when time stands still, which is true, time is always still. It's just our idea of it floating through it. Okay. But Time stands still and waits on the goal of God's teachers. Not one thought of sin will remain the instant any one of them accepts atonement for himself. Think of the word atonement as at one mint, everything becoming one. Okay. It is, it is not easier to forgive one sin than to forgive more. Why? Because they're all equally as unreal. The illusion of the order of difficulty is an obstacle the teacher of God must learn to pass by and leave behind. So we think, oh, I can cure a headache, but I can't help that 
paraplegic blind child see and walk again. And it's not true because all of it is the same. You offer gratitude and you see it healed and you offer the healing. And it's not up to you whether that person should be healed or not. They've got their own karmic print. They've got their own karma they need to do. So you just step back and allow and see knowingly. Okay. Once and perfectly forgiven by one teacher of God can make salvation complete. Can you understand this? Why? It must be able to understand because it's one dreamer. No, it is meaningless to anyone here. Yet it is the final lesson in which unity is restored. It goes against all the, sh the thinking of the world, but so does heaven. The world will end when its thought system has been completely reversed. Until then, bits and pieces of its sharing will, be, will still seem sensible. Yet the final lesson which brings the ending of the world cannot be grasped by those not yet prepared to leave the world and go beyond its tiny reach. Hence, they keep reincarnating. As much as they sometimes say they won't, they want to come here and they want to find love. When then is the function of the teacher of God in this conduct, concluding lesson? He need merely learn how to approach it, to be willing to go in its direction, go within or you go without. He need merely trust that. If God's voice tells him it's a lesson he can learn, he can learn it. He does not judge it either as hard or easy. His teacher points to it and trusts that he will show him how, how to learn it. So remember, it's just a very gentle inward turning. The world will end in joy because it's a place of sorrow. Where joy has come, the purpose of the world is gone. Why? The transcendence of the self is made known to itself. No more need to blame duality. The world will end in peace because it is a place of war. When peace has come, what is the purpose of the world? The world will end in laughter because it is a place of tears and therefore needs to be shifted around into right-minded thinking where there is no pain, suffering, guilt. Where there is laughter, who can longer weep? And only complete forgiveness brings us to all to bless the world. In blessing it departs, for it will not end as it began. To turn hell into heaven is the function of God's teachers to see anew. For what they teach are lessons in which heaven is reflected as themselves, as they bring each other into that awareness. And now sit down in true humility and realize that all that God would have you do, you can do. In other words, sometimes it's really big toss, but it's still humility because it's you believing that you truly are offering this to God, for God, as God through you. Okay. This will be done. It cannot be otherwise. And be you thankful it is so. Uh,